e to the i pi equals negative 1 is widely viewed as one of mathematics' most beautiful formulas. The reasoning for this is typically the amount of interesting numbers that it contains, but this formula can only be truly appreciated if you understand where the formula comes from. That's what this video is about. Our story starts with the polar form of a complex number, that is, a complex number described by some distance from the origin and an angle with the x-axis. They can be expressed with this formula, but for our purposes we're only concerned with those numbers that lie a distance of 1 from the origin. That's all the numbers that lie on this unit circle. The problem with this formula is that it's difficult to use. It's difficult to compute because you need to find both the sine and cosine of a given angle. Further, this formula provides no hints to some of the important properties polar coordinates possess. In particular, the fact that multiplying them together has the effect of adding up their angles. That's why a 90 degree rotation squared equals a 180 degree rotation. Because of this, mathematicians started looking for a shorthand for the polar coordinate formula. They noticed that the multiplication leading to adding property was shared with the exponential formula, so they reasoned that a shorthand could look like this, some exponent to the power of i times theta. If this feels like an unnatural step, consider the way that exponents were extended to handle square roots. It was done so by maintaining the multiplying leads to adding the exponents property. This left mathematicians with two questions. First, how do we compute some exponent to the power of i? You can't multiply things together i times. And secondly, what exponent is the one that equals the polar form of the complex number? Let's start with the second question. By taking the derivative of our polar coordinate equation, if you're not familiar with calculus, you can consider this getting the velocity of our function at each point. Notice that the velocity of our function is a 90 degree rotation of our function's position. Taken together with the fact that our function equals 1 at an angle of 0, we can find all the other points of our function. You can consider this the point being dragged around the circle by the velocity vector, similar to how you might draw a circle with a piece of string by fixing the piece of string at a point and pulling the pencil around the circle. Notice that all exponents share the property that an angle of 0 equals 1, meaning that we need to find an exponent with the same velocity. Such an exponent will solve our problem. To do this, we can start with the general formula for the derivative of an exponent. You can see that the exponent we need is the one where the natural log of that exponent equals 1. Therefore, we can say that our exponent must be e, so the shorthand is e to the i theta. The interesting thing about this result is that we got it without ever needing to actually compute e to the i theta. We could reason it out by showing that it shares a point and the velocity of our polar coordinates function. Now then, we should try to compute this function. We start off with a different definition of e, the compound interest definition. To start with, consider what happens to one pound in a bank account with an interest rate of 100%, paid out once a year. The question then is what happens if we pay out the same interest rate but twice in the year, or what about three times? Notice that as the amount of times we pay out increases, we seem to approach some value. This value is called e. Now, by doing some rearranging we can get a formula for e to the x, and we can substitute in i theta to get our equation. You can see here that we're substituting in an angle of pi and seeing what happens as we approach our limit. The result approaches negative 1. This is really what mathematicians appreciate about e to the i pi equals negative 1. It's not about the equation itself, but the way it provides a tour of some of math's most important concepts. We start with the idea of trying to solve a problem, the bad polar coordinates equation. Then, we reason that it shares some properties with an exponential function. From there we're able to prove this connection is true without ever computing a result, and then finally we go back to compute our result to see that we were correct. This is a window into the mathematical method of thinking and problem solving, and it's why e to the i pi is viewed as so incredible by mathematicians.